And good evening and welcome to Fat Pigeon Live. Yeah, we're bringing you live music from where we are to where you are. And where we are tonight is St Laurentius Church in Biddulph, on the edge of the Staffordshire Moorlands. Now, we love reading your comments during the show, so keep sending them in. And now, over to Craig from Biddulph, up in arms. Um, Hannah and Phil um, never played in Biddulph. Um, we they did a support slot down at Clonta Opera for a supporting show of hands, and our good friends in Alstonfield have put them on, and so it's absolutely great that they're here tonight. So please give them a big round of applause. Biddulph, welcome for Edgelocks. Thank you. Hey, we're going to be on telly. <laughs> I just refer for my mum and dad to say we're going to be, oh, you're going to be on telly, lad, are you? You're going to be on telly. It's really nice to be here. Thanks for coming out. We're going to play Silbury Hill. Now here is the city, its skyscrapers 
It's really lovely to be here with you this evening in this beautiful venue and uh, at the Biddulph Up in Arms. That's such a great name for a club as well. I've always liked that. I can't believe it was... Um, we actually, uh, when we played at the, the Clonta Opera Theatre, uh, that was 2011, wasn't it? That was a long time ago now. It makes me feel old. <clears throat> I feel like I should take this opportunity as well to say, Hi, Mum. Uh, <laughs> she's watching down in Devon. And uh, we're going to play you mainly songs of our of our most recent album this evening. Um, you may have noticed that we've uh, that we've changed our name. So we are still called Phil and Hannah because those are just our names. Um, but we've now got a band name, and our band name is Edgelarks. And um, we'd, we'd wanted a band name for a long time, and uh, we thought very hard about it and you know we, we, we just thought is it, is it going to be too hard to to change and tell people and uh, we thought well it's, it's fine because we're, we're doing a lot more touring in um, in Australia and Canada these days and um, it's very exciting and it'll make a lot more sense to go there with just the one name rather than four different Christian names that make people think that a quartet's going to turn up and um, it's disappointing for people so we've got to change it and we we went through the whole rigmarole and it was quite complicated and but we thought right finally finally we're there and um we went to australia in january and did a, a month-long tour there and we were very excited and we thought finally it's going to make sense that we've done this big name change and people they don't know us already so we can just tell them our name and it'll it'll all be very smooth and easy and we did this epic journey on boxing day and turned up to this festival in a in a rainforest and it was 90 degree humidity and we kind of dragged ourselves to the first gig thinking yeah but it's all okay because we've changed our name and it's going to be fantastic and uh, we got onto the stage and the MC said please welcome the eagle hawks <laughs> that's, that's when the jet lag really kicked in actually <laughs> so we'll play a new song called no victory there's a, possibly a subtle anti-Brexit vibe going on behind this song. We think Brexit's a load of bollocks. I'm quite happy to say that on camera. Forty-eight <laughs> percent of the audience just. Uh... <laughs> it's a song called No Victory. Long 
you did There's no home, no place to rest your head The battle over, the river dry No more to say, no more tears to cry continue with a, a song that I wrote after reading a story about um, some historians in the Netherlands and um, they discovered this this trunk uh, that was full of letters and it was 300 years old and the letters had accumulated in this trunk and they, they'd um, been collected by a postmaster 300 years ago and they were all the letters that no one ever turned up to collect so they'd all never been delivered to the people they were intended for and they'd never been opened either. I don't, this had just, you know, sat in someone's loft for, for that long. And um, so these historians were going through reading all these letters for the, for the very first time. And um, as you can imagine, all these stories appeared. Um, all the different reasons why people uh, were writing and of course, good indications as to why people never collected their letters as well and um, this one story in particular really jumped out at me it's the story of a woman who she was a singer I think in Amsterdam and um, she had an affair with a rich merchant and she got pregnant and he sent her away in disgrace and um, she sent him this series of letters pleading for his help and he never even collected them so I thought writing her this song was the best possible revenge I could offer her. Better late than never. Yeah, I'm going to use this uh, Indian slide guitar. This has got 22 strings, which is why I'm spending a bit of time tuning it now. <laughs> um, I'll tell you more about it later in the show. Uh, what I will tell you is I'm going to use a paintbrush to play it now, which is definitely not what I learnt in India. And this thing over here is called a Shruti box. That also comes from India. Though that one was built in Wales. Yes, um, it has caused some confusion at times, this, because um, it, it, it could seem like it's moving entirely of its own volition, but it's not. It's, uh, it's got this pedal system here, which I'm actually using my foot to operate, so mystery solved. I did have some people come up to me after a gig and they were so disappointed because they thought it was some kind of like magic box that was opening to reveal something to them. <laughs> Kept expecting it in, in the big finale but um, it never happened. We were hoping to employ someone to pump it for us but due to cutbacks we had to fire them. <laughs> That's uh, another benefit of Brexit there. <laughs> <For you. laughs> This is, this is called Undelivered. I have 
I've gone away I knew you would not wish me stay Oh my fair weather friend Though the ink may run from my pen Though I would write you back again You came with the sun You left with the rain You came with the sun you left with the rain So I send what I can That careful words may move a man Though I send you my love It lies there undelivered I carry what little I can The pen and paper in my hand The plans that we had laid The beginnings of the child we made Though ink may stain, ink may fade Ink may bring you back again Ink may bring you back The sun is coming soon You'll be delivered by the stars and moon I will write you once again Tell you of his eyes, tell you his name Though the letter will lie and not be claimed For you came with the night You left with the day you came with the night you left with the day So I send what I can That careful words may move a man Oh, I send you my love It lies there Ceaseless rule from desperate hands, our secrets spilled. Our letters sit unanswered still. Our letters sit unanswered. to be lost in between
Questions meet the air and leave you neither here nor there. They leave you neither here nor there. So I send or take hand that careful words may move a man. Though I send you my love, lies there undelivered. Lies there with Phil, he's going to play you some harmonica. Okay, I'm going to do a train impression on the harmonica for you. Uh, we do a lot of playing abroad these days, and this train imitation can come in quite useful. Uh, it was very useful in Japan. Uh, they didn't speak any English, I didn't speak any Japanese, but we both have trains. Uh, but it was particularly good in South Africa. Uh, and uh, we did... Um, did a very nice tour of KwaZulu Natal, uh, playing mostly in kind of white middle class folk clubs. And we did one gig in downtown Durban in an anti apartheid African jazz bar. And we were the first English folk duo they've had, ever had in there, and probably the last. <laughs> the owner of the venue looked pretty sheepish about the whole thing. Um, he said to me before the gig, there's a tradition here that if the gig's going well, the audience will get on their feet and start dancing a train around the room. But don't worry if it doesn't happen for you folk musicians, because I realise how hard it'll be for you. So I thought to myself, I'm going to get this bloody train going if it kills me. <laughs> and it nearly did. So I did my usual train. Uh, you'll see in a moment. It takes a fair bit of puff. Uh, I was doing the train, there was a bit of foot tapping, lots of drinking and talking going on. I thought, this isn't going that well, so I'm going to slow it down and bring it into the station before I pass out. It was quite hot in there. Um, so just as I slowed it down and brought it into the station, everyone got on their feet and started dancing a train around the room. So I brought it back up to speed and had to keep it going for another 25 minutes. <laughs> so I just about recovered from that, that was three years ago now. So I'll do the train for you now. This one's called Underground Railroad. <clears throat> Oh, my God. 
พี่ฟิลิปเฮนรี่มาฮามอนค่ะขอบคุณมากนั่นคือการสะอาดและสะอาดอย่างรวดเร็วที่สุดที่มีในโลกนี้ขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับขอบคุณมา And uh, however many thousand people are listening out there, <laughs> it's a lovely tune called uh, "Little Bird." We play at Broadstairs Folk Week most weeks, and uh, the best part of that's going to watch Tim Eady do a gig there. And we've done this; we played this tune together a few times. So, so this is "Little Bird" in Wichita.
next song was inspired by a story I heard about a bird called the California Jay. And um, the California Jay is an unusual creature. It's known to hold funerals. So um, when one of the Jays dies, all the other Jays gather around and um, they stop eating and they have a special cry that they only use at that time, which is called a scold. And um, it's very easy to interpret it in human terms as a funeral. And these scientists did this experiment where they tried replacing the dead jay with all different types of other bird, everything from pelicans to tiny songbirds, things that look really dramatically different from jays. And uh, they also used some inanimate objects. And what they found was that the, the jays didn't respond to the objects at all, but that they didn't discriminate between any of the other birds, they held funerals for all of them, which I thought was quite amazing, very humane for a bird. So I wrote them this next song. And um, I've been playing this, this song with, with Phil, but also as a part of a project called Shake the Chains, which I was delighted to be part of group of folk singers, we all got together and sang protest songs and um, it, was a, it was a wonderful experience. It's been a busy year. We've got a CD of the Shake the Chains project and also a CD of our Gig Spanner Big Band project, which is uh, another thing we've been involved with. And uh, conveniently enough, we've got some CDs just over there by the bar, so do you feel free to have a browse? Yeah, so that's three new CDs, and if you buy all three, you get a free bird funeral. How's that? <laughs> you have to claim that from the club, though. It's nothing to do with us. <laughs> so this is Song of the Jay.
that G will sing the song of all his loves and his battles his whole life long. All the air he held beneath his wing, all the joy he did bring, will sing his song and will mourn him just the same. Unclipped, they should see the sky. I will let the tears roll for all who Said the Jimmy Scold To bring all our kind to the memory of his soul A stranger or friend you have never known From a distant land he may have flown And still hear me scold For we'll mourn him just the same Thank you. Thank you. We'll just play you one more in this half. Yes, this is a this is a song that we wrote um, while we were on our travels. We uh, we're lucky enough to have toured in Australia twice now, and um, the first time we were there, we were there for quite a long time, and um, we got a bit homesick, and we ended up writing this song because. Because um, on, on my sort of most homesick day, when I was feeling quite down, um, we were shown wonderful hospitality after our gig and put up by these lovely people. And they opened their home to us, and um, we suddenly felt a lot better about everything. So I wrote this song to say thank you to everybody who does that for us while we're on the road and uh, shows us hospitality. And um, it, the, the, the chorus of this song was inspired by a, a real signpost that we saw on Tasmania and uh, the, para uh, the, the signpost read, Paradise, 15 miles, nowhere else, 5 miles. And I thought that just perfectly describes how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> In a, an amazing place, but rather homesick. Uh, so this song is called Signpost. So we'll take a short break after this. Thank you ever so much for listening. Uh, do come and have a look at the CDs and join our mailing list and all that kind of thing. Came to a 
valley on the other side of the world There's a lady in the valley She's built her life from apple trees The strongest, sweetest wood The roots run wondrous deep She walks with the earth The fruit grows strong upon her trees These branches could hold me here on the other side of the world Everybody's looking for a signpost Everybody wants to know how far they have come How far they still have to go Fifteen miles from paradise Heading on down the road side of the world And I never thought I'd miss the rain of another call the harbor But my bones remember I was born on the other side of the world Everybody's looking for a signpost Everybody wants to know how far they have come How far they still have to go You're watching Fat Pigeon Live.
Well, the edge larks, everybody. What about that, eh? Fantastic, and they're only halfway through. Uh, what do you reckon, Craig? Pretty going damn well. good. Going well so far. This is Craig, by the way. It's Craig Pickering. Uh, he's the man behind uh, uh, Bidolf up in arms. Well, it's not you just on your own, is it? But no, it isn't very much a team thing. Yeah, he's a very modest bloke as well. He told me this last time. Look, I know we've talked about this before, but uh, do you want to just uh, tell us a little bit more about how Bidolf up in arms started and uh... well it started in 1986 as yeah. Biddle Folk Club run by Eric Cox who's over there yeah, yeah. Uh, and then 20 Hello, years Eric. down the line we tr decided to try and change the name maybe broaden the type of thing that we put on sure. so we couldn't be defined by just being a folk club so we dropped the, dropped the F and C words <laughs> well, well that's and a very good thing to do especially <laughs> when you're on TV, up in arms. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're trying to introduce them but we're not brave enough yeah, no, <laughs> so it's going from strength to strength is it? Oh, I couldn't, can't well even I, th it. I think we're you know we're on a bit of a roll at the moment you can tell from the attendances yeah, we've been getting lately great attendance tonight yeah but you don't take your foot off you keep the foot to the pedal absolutely. all the time that's you know, what you have promotion. to do isn't yeah, it yeah absolutely. yeah and uh, during about four foot snow last uh, week you had a good attendance even then didn't you well amazingly yeah. we managed to get 42 people out that's which is a quite an amazing. incredible thing really. <laughs> yeah that's not bad considering they had to dig their way through the snow no, to absolutely. get here yeah uh, so what's happening next what's your next thing coming up um, we've got a gentleman uh, a fantastic songwriter from Nashville called Rod Pycott which we're going to have to reposition again because of the closure of the pub but we'll maybe uh, use right. it maybe use coming from the pub to this wonderful church well yeah, yeah and it's just really special this venue yeah, so we didn't want to special. use it all the yeah. time yeah. but um so we're going to use the sound all for that and try uh, and to create a more who's that again rod pycott from rod nashville pycott from nashville tennessee nashville Fantastic. tennessee yeah well uh, keep the good work up craig thank you very much uh, no, got, thank you got, guys for absolutely well you know trying to Honing in we on just what we do. Turn up and do telly, you know, it's, it's easy for us, really. Yeah. You've got to do all the organising yeah, well. beforehand, haven't you? Yeah, well, uh, I actually uh, had a chat with the Edgelarks, the two of them, you know. Yeah, before on. Earlier on. So I think we're going to see that now. Are we going to see that now? Coming up right now. Ever since Pete Seeger allegedly took an axe to Bob Dylan's power cable when he brought a rock band to the Newport Festival, uh, traditional folk music has had many adventures with the modern, the electronic, the different, and the experimental. So let's meet the edge locks. Experimental, traditional, it's all modern. just music to us. <laughs> it's all music, yeah. yeah, it's all yeah just I'm music. sort of aiming those words at you because mm. I think uh, it does have something to do with the way you approach your folk music, does it not? Absolutely. I mean, we, we love folk music and traditional stuff, and we like it done in a very traditional way, but that's been done many times and yeah. when we sit down together and start playing what we come up with is we're trying to come up with something new so so does that include uh, non-traditional instruments or are all your instruments traditional i think a lot of them you would say aren't traditional for an english folk duo you could say that the guitar is not traditional though really oh you? yeah if you're well, going to be really no, we're not going to go that traditional <laughs> But well, uh, it does come. It is more of an American thing to have a guitar there. Yeah. But yeah. we, I suppose, our instrumentation on the outside looks more American. We've got dobros, banjos, fiddles, and things like that. I suppose the fiddle's quite traditionally English. But I do have an Indian classical slide guitar up there as well. Well, there you go. But that could be traditional. In well, it's traditionally Indian. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Well, not that tra well, <laughs> since the fifties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they only yeah. started playing their guitar in the forties and fifties. And uh, you've got a sort of beatbox harmonica thing going on. Yeah, yeah, I do that. That's um, not traditional. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think <laughs> folk music is, there's a wonderful folk music scene in this country and our association with folk music is that we like it, but we never went out to be a folk band. Right. We kind of just played some folk songs because we like them. I've kind of influenced by country blues players like Sonny Terry and they were always innovating with what they were doing. He, he introduced, or him and DeFord Bailey introduced the technique of singing in falsetto voice with the harmonica, mm -hmm. making lots of strange whooping noises, yeah. imitating the sound of dogs chasing a fox and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> they were doing all that back in the 20s mm -hmm. and earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so the Edge Larks, that's a new name, isn't it? It is, yeah. So what, what was all that about then? Because you were just by your own names, weren't you? Yeah, yes. we, we always yeah. intended to come up with a band name. Mm -hmm. It just took us four or five years to get round to <laughs> doing it, you know. We don't like to rush. No. <laughs> no. Well, why? Why should you? Yeah. So well, does it mean anything in particular? Uh, well, quite a lot of people have, have thought mistakenly that it is an actual bird, an edge lark. Ah, um, right. But it's not. It is an invented mm. yeah. thing. Yeah. And it, it's just the conjunction of two words that seem to fit together nicely that when we were writing our 
uh, most recent album, um, a lot of the the content is to do with people on the boundaries or the edges of places. And then obviously larks are famous for singing, so edge yeah. and lark just seem to fit together perfectly, doesn't It's they? obvious, really. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and from that comes a word that I'd never heard of before. Mm. I thought you'd made that up too, liminal. Yeah. It's a real so, word. Yeah, it is. A that's real, what, what, it. Well, go on, explain what it means. The kind of place of transition or a boundary or a threshold. But you could have a, like a liminal time of day would be dusk or dawn, you know, when things are changing, when... When change is possible, and uh, so edge in comes into this. Sort yes, of as exactly. Well, it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah an, ed- an edge is a liminal space. Yeah, a yeah. boundary or yeah. a margin. Yeah. So what about the tour then? Is it just kicking off, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. First night of the of the tour, really tonight. Is it the yeah. actual first night? Yeah. yeah. We've done a couple of gigs, but this is yeah. the start of the crazy time. So. Yeah. <laughs> so so where's your base? Where have you come from? Devon. 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 Exmouth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice down there. Yeah. Bit of snow recently. Lots. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, got, I had to abandon my car and walk ten miles the other day. Well, fun. not to do a gig. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. That would have been impressive because yeah. I, I saw all the stuff you brought in tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, we don't yeah. travel light. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've yeah. won an award. We have, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised you mentioned it. You're obviously very <laughs> Radio 2 Folk Award. Yes, yeah. Uh, for we best duo. Mm. Yeah. Great. We were so, very pleased to win it. It's good kind of recognition of the yeah. hard work that you put yeah. in and that kind yeah. of thing. I think that's what most people say about awards, isn't it, really? Yeah. 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 So um, where are you going off next on tour? I know you didn't want me to, uh, to <laughs> test you on this. but uh, we're, we're in Sheffield what? tomorrow. Okay, so you're staying, well, going further north. Northern Lakes, yeah. 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 yeah, and uh, uh, near Lancaster. And yeah. uh, the Wirral. So yeah, so Northern Lakes. Lake. So we're, we're basing ourselves at my mum and dad's house in Lancashire in Chorley. So. Well, it's been great talking to you, Ben. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, very you much. I, I just want to leave this interview with a little quote which comes from your website. In the end, we have far more in common than things that divide us because we are all liminal. We're all standing on the threshold of tomorrow. We're all just passing through. Welcome back, Edge Logs. Thank you. So uh, we've driven up from Devon today. That's where we live, that's where I'm from. Phil's from Lancashire, but um, he emigrated. I've turned soft. <laughs> And um, so this song is um, semi-autobiographical. Talks about how we met and where we lived when we first moved to Exmouth. And it also is inspired by a film called The Big Short. I don't know if anybody's seen that film. It won an Oscar and uh, it's got Brad Pitt in it. And it's, uh, it's about the, the 2008 financial crash. And... Um, Ostensibly, it's a film that has absolutely nothing at all to do with life in a small Devonian town. Um, but I watched this film, and um, it's kind of all set in shiny Wall Street offices and places a very long way from Exmouth. Um, and then there's this scene near the end of the film where Brad Pitt goes on a family holiday to Exmouth in Devon. <laughs> so he's this banker who's about to make his absolute huge millions um, from predicting uh, the crash of the housing market and um, the reason that they show him going on holiday to Devon is uh, is because it's while he's there that he gets the phone call saying quick 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 you've got to make the trade everything's gonna crash and um, and so he, he being in Devon can't find any Wi-Fi <laughs> and he has to go to our local pub and in reality, this is actually a rather sticky branch of Weatherspoons. Um, but in the film, they had to make it the Hollywood version. So actually, in the film, they've used a very beautiful thatched building. And Brad Pitt walks in. And as you can imagine, everyone falls silent and goes, "Ah!" at him. Um, very Devonian. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I thought this was so strange that... Um, one of the one of the major um, beneficiaries of that massive financial global disaster um, 
it actually made the trade that made his fortune in our local pub in Exmouth. I found this so incongruous and weird. And it got me thinking about what we were doing at that time. And um, this song came out of it. It's called Caravans. When first we met, we lived out of town by St. John in the wilderness. We were living by the air. We didn't need to stop or rest. We were playing a gypsy living walking barefoot out on the road looking for the deer by twilight we didn't care what was bought and sold it was a small disused caravan and we filled it with guitars who needs walls of color when all you want is to look at the stars And when the crash came it didn't matter For we thought those were the chains we'd refuse And losing it all isn't something you feel when you have nothing to lose Losing it all isn't something you feel When you have nothing to lose up the hill for water and one night as I was washing plates I heard a sob from the corner and I never will forget her face she said we were normal people Two jobs, a house, and three kids. The crash came and took you toll. And now it's 18 months we've lived like this. It's 18 months we've lived like this. A dream can come and light you up. Dreams can take, dreams can live, but dreams can Oh, 
What did he know of caravans? What did he know of you or me? A stranger came to Exmouth Town He saw the houses built on sand The rich they dream their money grows What do they know of caravans? What do they know of caravans? A dream can come and light you up A dream can drive you with its will Dreams can give, but dreams can take Dreams can live, but dreams can kill Dreams can live, but dreams can very much. That was a, a song in Cornish uh, called Estran, uh, which means stranger, and it's sometimes known in English as the emigrant's song. And um, it, it tells the story of, of an American stranger coming to the West Country and having a fantastic time, which is exactly what Brad Pitt did. I think it must have been curry night, what do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Chicken Wednesday. <laughs> We're going to sing you another traditional song now. Um, this one is one of my favourite English folk songs. And it's called What's the Life of a Man? And um, I think it's got some really beautiful words. And uh, Phil's going to play it on this guitar, this amazing guitar, which um, we didn't fully explain in the first half. It's called a Chaturangi. And um, Phil went to to Calcutta 
to study Indian classical slide guitar back in 2008. He studied with a man called Pandit Debashish Bhattacharya, who is a, an incredible musician. And um, Debashish actually invented this style of guitar himself, so they are quite rare. And the name means four in one. And uh, it's based around a kind of um, 50s archtop style guitar design with the main playing strings in the middle there. But it's also got um, some drone strings called Chikari strings, those ones. And uh, there's also the majority of the strings are these things called sympathetic strings. And the idea is that they will uh, resonate along sympathetically. So you don't necessarily have to directly pluck them before you hear them, which is similar to instruments like the sitar. And uh, it's quite a kind of Indian sound, or I think we associate it as being an Indian sound. Um, but they only work as sympathetic strings if they are very in tune, which is why I'm talking to you in Phil's tuning. <laughs> And the nice thing about the little strings, the sympathetics, uh, they're all down here at the side. But you can play them like a miniature harp. So we thought we'd use that uh, texture to arrange an English folk song, so we've done a version of the song What's the Life of a Man, which we'll play for you now. I was walking on morning at ease, viewing the leaves that had fell from the trees, all in full motion, appearing to be, and those that had with you. Anymore than a leaf, a man has. 
should he grieve? Though in this world we appear fine and gay like a leaf, we must wither and soon fade. very much. So um, this next song is uh, one that I wrote for the women who are um, in detention at a detention centre called Yarlswood in Bedfordshire. And um, in the interval I found out there's some people here tonight who have a friend who's locked up in there at the moment, so I'd like to sing this for them. And I, I wish your friend all the best. Um, Yarlswood is a, is a place where there are a lot of allegations of human rights abuses and um, at the moment some of the women locked up inside there um, are on hunger strike protesting at their conditions and the fact that uh, it's possible for the government to um, lock them up indefinitely and um, I wrote this song to support a, a charity called Women for Refugee Women who have been running a campaign for quite a little while now to uh, get the place shut down. And uh, that campaign is called Set Her Free and I would urge you to look it up if you're interested. And I dreamed no more of 
trees The tree has many branches Reaching for the sky A tree has roots that run deep Shelters many deep He made the choice that is no choice And so I left my home Perhaps to find some new nest Now that my own is gone Then I came to this country They cut the cord Thank you. Hey, this is a song of hope. It's actually a gospel song. Keep on 
so much for coming out this evening we have had a, a really wonderful time playing for you this is uh, the sort of first night of our tour proper and uh, I don't think we could have hoped to start off in a, in a better way so uh, thank you all so much for coming out we'd like to say a, a special thank you um, to uh, Craig and everyone at this lovely club for making it happen for having us thank you so much <laughs> We'd like to thank the, uh, the Fat Pigeon guys as well. They're doing an amazing job, and thank you guys. We're going to sing you this one last song. This is a, a song that comes from the West Midlands, from Halesone and Bromsgrove specifically, and a nail maker's strike that happened there in 1862. Nailmakers went on strike to protest at their poor pay and working conditions. And one of the leaders of the strike was a man called Sam Salt. And he wrote them this song to sing as they marched between the two towns. And we thought it was well worth reviving, so we have done, but we've added a chorus. And we would love it if you would sing along with us on this chorus. It goes like this. You've got to fight for your rights. My brothers, yeah, fight for your rights. My sisters, yeah, fight for your rights. My brothers.
never just right have done right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So the encore, eh? What a strange thing. <laughs> we blame the French, and uh, we're thinking that after Brexit we might not have to do it anymore. So, <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> nah, he loves it, really. He absolutely loves it. Makes him feel very special. And, uh, yeah, we'd like to thank you all again for, for coming out this evening. We really have had a, a really special gig playing here in this lovely building. And um, we do hope to see you again somewhere down the road. At Alston Field, yes, quite possibly. Um, if you don't know about that lovely um, series of gigs, I think they've got some flyers with them. And, that, yeah, that's a lovely place to go and, and see good music as well. So do keep supporting live music. I've looked at the lists for both Alston Field and here, and they've got some... Brilliant stuff coming up, so uh, I hope you uh, can make it to some of those. We're going to play you one of our old favourites to finish. Yeah, thanks so much for coming out to see us. We're going to finish with this song called The Boy That Wouldn't Hold Corn. So this one's an old English ballad, but this is based on the bluegrass version of it. And we've improvised a lot, and we've added a French medieval tune in the middle, which we're going to be taking out in a, in a few months. <laughs> So make the most of that. <laughs> that tune's called Bella Ellis. Uh, this song is called The Boy the Wind Hokorn. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time.
I said, what do you say? so much for coming out and listening. I'd like a very special round of applause from the fiddle, the banjo, tenor guitar, shrewdy box, the vocals. That's Miss Hannah Martin.
What about that then? <laughs> Philly Penry, Hannah Martin. Yeah, well, thank you very much to our host, Bidolf, up in arms there. And a great set from our new fat pigeon fringe, the Edge Larks. Uh, now, Alan Miller has just posted that he's got their new CD and it's fab. Our next live show will be on the 14th of March, and that's at Blakey's over in Newcastle under Lyme, uh, where we feature the Paprika Blues Band. So either get yourself down there or get yourself tuned in. Don't forget to keep telling people to subscribe to our subscribe button on our, fat, uh, on our YouTube channel. And we've been Fat Pigeon Live, I've been Duffy. See you again soon.